Hello everyone, we're going to get started on working on this cover here. So where I left off was we were stopping on this landscape version, excuse me, on this portrait version because I was waiting for my pictures. So my pictures are here, I've mounted a couple of them and I've actually put a few in my album already, but I'm going to do the rest of it with you all. Or I tape simple things like taping things down, adding a few embellishments here and there. But look at how cute already with pictures in the album. So you'll be able to see that in this version. Now with this version, so while I was waiting for my pictures, we decided to go ahead and mat this version. Again, picture perfect mini album in the land in the portrait and in the landscape orientation. So we decorated already, we, meaning we matted this uh, album already. And what we have left to do is the covers. So I chose this particular paper for my cover. All right, and I went ahead and I cut it down to size. And now I'm just gonna stick my pieces down. I also um, picked a few embellishments out and this is from the embellishment pack. And I already went over all of the papers. So I've cut my pieces for my cover. I decided to go with the same paper collection for the cover in the front, the back, the spine, everything. All right, I went ahead and added my tape and I'm going to use, I'm going to use this one for my cover. Yep, all right, so I'm gonna start removing the tape backing and I'm gonna go ahead and cover my album place this on there, stick it on there really well. And, um, and we'll finish this one up so then we can add photos to the other one. Okay, for this particular album, I don't have any photos. So until that happens, this album stays as is. If not, it'll, it could become a gift or, or just, you know, I'll, I'll definitely leave it hanging around in the gift pile, which would be, which would make a lovely, lovely gift. So just lining that up. Alrighty. Already, how pretty, <laughs> just with paper alone. Now for the back side, I always, although this paper has no direction right now, I just always like to make sure that I'm doing, you know, I have the book in the right orientation just so I can get accustomed to being sure that my book is going the right side up because there's nothing worse than sticking something down and the interior of your book is upside down because of the choices you made on your outside cover. All right, so always pay attention to that. Okay, so I've got my tape all the way around the perimeter of my pattern paper. All right, I made sure that that is, um, <clears throat> that that's a must because you don't want the cover, you don't want the cover peeling up on certain corners or sides of your album. That would just make all this work, you know, not so fabulous. Okay, and I just, I absolutely adore this paper. And now I'm just gonna go ahead and stick my, the paper I chose for my spine down. And it's super simple and beautiful. All right, um, the cover can be simple, guys. You don't have to throw everything and the kitchen sink on the cover. You also can use flat embellishments. You don't have to use three-dimensional embellishments, embellishments for your cover. So again, making sure my book is going in the right direction before I stick this on, because this has direction on it. Um, you know, you can make it as simple as you want and it'll still be gorgeous. All right, I personally do not like to stick uh, three-dimensional embellishments on my cover. Um, I'm not telling you I haven't done it. I'm telling you that is not my preference. Sometimes I ha just have an embellishment that I just got to have on the cover and I use it. 
but it makes it hard for you to look at the album when you open your book it makes it very difficult I personally burnish everything down that I stick everything every corner absolutely everything sometimes I don't do this on camera but when you're taking one of my classes or one of my workshops um, I always say burnish 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 I can't stress that enough it really yields you a beautiful finished looking project okay it's super important to burnish all right make sure all those corners are perfectly adhered and you don't really have to worry about it coming up because you have burnished all right that's why end-to-end -end coverage on the tape is super duper important here in this curve it's even more important to burnish because you want to make sure that that paper is perfectly glued down before you start messing with so much because what happens is is if you don't burnish it stays lifted a little bit and then you get dirt in there and fuzz and dust bunnies and debris from from your desk and what happens is it will will no longer stick down all right so just make sure you take a minute to burnish around the perimeter in the inside outside all over the place guys all over the place all right and then you got yourself this beautiful cover and already it looks dynamite I have a few embellishments here that I picked out from the embellishment pack it's the bow bunny note worthy pack and I just picked out here's the, the the number the million dollar question where do you start start Kathy what do you pick first you pick out things you like all right I can't trust that enough you pick things you like and that's where you start I absolutely this one was my first one I picked gotta have the lady right she is pretty much the tallest thing in here all right so I tend to start with the tallest thing and then I work my way around it is that the right way I don't know this is the way I do my things so you want to have things in the foreground in the and in the back in the foreground and in the background and all over the place right um, so you start with your element and you're going to put things on top and then behind to create that dimensionality a lot of people uh, use pop dots to create dimensionality I personally am not a fan of the pop dots I don't like the way they look when you look like this and you're like three pop dots three pop dots deep it's just not my favorite thing to look at but please if that's what you like go for it just because I don't like it doesn't mean it's not the right way please absolutely go for it so I'm gonna start by I pick these tags why because when you are cooking you you're always writing you're jotting things down so I'm using these for a place to to journal all right so I'm putting that behind my lady creating already dimensionality you can already already tell she's in the front and then I want these apples somewhere down here I know that I want my my um, my pie there already again creating dimension guys um, you may say gosh I don't want to cover any of those apples but you have to cover something okay so what you want to do is cover just enough so you can see what's back there so you know that there that those are apples back there or you're not going to put this so high that then you just have that poking out all right so see how I'm kind of creating an invisible I'm creating a, an, a floor if you will all right so my lady can stand on and if I can't create that then what I would do is I would hide her feet behind my pie and then you can't see where she's standing so it doesn't necessarily look like she's floating in the air she's standing definitely but my my pie is covering what she's standing on if that makes sense all right hopefully that does and this is going to be the title to my book here Bon Appetit and again if you want to create that illusion of hiding where where there's a floor all right then you want to just kind of hide feet okay and that way nothing will be in the air 
All right, and I really think that that looks good. So if you want to add something else, I absolutely love this. I will add this back here. Doesn't really matter that you can't, if I tuck it too far down, doesn't really matter that you can see the whole sentiment. You can tell that it's a cutting board. This is all about cooking and you see the word cook right there front and center. Now, if you think that you can shift this over just a little bit, all right, and just kind of move that over, you can get a, you see how that looks. I personally don't like too much empty space in between pieces. I kind of like to create a nice collage, nice tight collage without it looking too crowded. So what we can do is we can move some elements over. All right, and if you want some of her legs poking out, absolutely. All right, see, and now we have a little bit more space there. Okay, and I'm not an art teacher, guys, so I can't tell you about composition, placement. I can kind of tell you what makes sense to me. All right, and, and what makes sense to me is what looks good to me if that makes sense, all right? And this looks really good to me. I cr I've created dimension, there's things in front, behind, and all sorts of places, and you, I have a title, and I have a look here, and I, I really love the way this looks. So you can go ahead and add more um, dimensionality by introducing different fabrics or materials, and in this case, I'm gonna use this uh, jute rope here to create that little, you know, you always hang this. So I'm just gonna do it on that one right there, okay? So all of this gets glued down and I just use regular glue. Again, I personally do not use pop dots, but if you want to, you can go for it. What would you pop up? I don't know, cause I don't use pop dots. So that is up to you, all right guys? All right, so now I'm gonna pull some of these elements off. Oh, and another tip, guys, if you create a look and you're not ready to glue things down and you're like, gosh, I really love this, I don't want to lose it, take a picture of it, all right? Take a picture of your look, remove the pieces, and then you can go ahead and, and do it again, all right? It makes your life a lot easier. Now, I wanted just to see what this looks like when I even out the whole floor there. And did that, see? I love evening out that entire floor right there, creating that, that first level. But I do not like that tucked behind. So, if I put this on top, I like that right in the front of everything, all right? If you want to tuck it behind the lady and have the lady in the front, you're going to lose the fork and it no longer to me looks like a place setting. All right. So look at the differences between that. All right. If you, if you got to pop something up, guys, you can pop this up. If you want this fork kind of tucking behind the pie, here's what I would do. I would cut into it nice and neat, make a nice neat cut, don't get all crazy, and just cut a little bit at a time. So you can kind of separate those two pieces. And you still have the place setting, but the fork is tucked behind the pie, and now you have the plate in the front. All right, and that still works too. Either way works. Sometimes you have to cut elements to give you the look that you want. All right, this element, I'm definitely gonna have it straight like that. Okay. And let's see what this one looks like. Turn, just give it a little tilt. I like that a lot. And I do like the fork behind there, so I'm gonna keep that. So I'm just gonna clean up my cut. So everything that I know, guys, um, is just self-taught 
and it's all based upon my taste, um, what I like to see, and and that's it, guys. It's not based on anything else. There's no classes that I've taken. There's no um, none of that. It's just what I like, and um, and that's it. And that's what I'm here for, guys. You guys can uh, follow what I'm doing and take these these little decorating tips as ideas on what you can do in your book, in your books, okay? You can follow my, my, um, my matting exactly. I just wanna see how far I want that. And you keep on playing with it. Now there is a, there is a point where you can just get so involved with moving pieces around and switching things around that it'll be take you forever in 10 days to do that but you know it's up to you how much time you want to put into it it really doesn't matter all right i just i really love that i remember i kind of even this out let's see that one more time and let's see this one more thing kind of maybe the apples being a little bit on a slant and I think I like the apples on a slant a little bit it gives it a little bit more playfulness all right so this is what we're doing all right so I'm gonna take everything out remember if you if you think you're gonna forget take a picture okay and I'm gonna cut a little bit of this jute well a lot more than I probably need I'm gonna cut a punch a hole into this and I'm not going to do um, any eyelid or anything. I don't need it. But of course, if you want to, go for it. And I'm simply going to feed this through here. Be careful you don't make a hole in there. You don't break your little cutting board. And I want it to be like that. And then I'm going to tie my little, my knot. And hopefully it's not too thick. Let's see. i got to be careful because I do not want to tear my little die cut piece. The only one I have. Okay, and then I'm going to cut this really, really tight. And typically that's what you see when you have a cutting board. That leather strap or whatever it is, is at the knot is on the front and this piece is hanging on the back. Okay, so then you added just a little playfulness with that. All right, so let's start gluing things down. Now carefully, remember we're tucking front, behind, all sorts of places. So I'm gonna put I'm gonna do a little bit of glue on my lady just in the middle. Okay, right there. And I remember that I moved her over slightly. And all I really need room for is this. And that's perfect there. And now I'm gonna put some glue on just in the middle. Because again, if I'm tucking, I gotta be careful. She, this was behind, I want it nice and straight, right? Just enough that she's in front of it. Okay, no space in between. And then we had apples kind of on a slant. And then we had our pie right there, enough to cover her feet, right? We were covering her feet, perfect. And this was like uh, this. Alrighty, I love it. So now I'm just gonna start pulling things out. Remember we need just enough so we can still tuck. We're tucking still. And I like that. 
And this is the last piece. I'm going to go in with the glue. And just enough to see the heading. Not too worried if I don't see it all the way. And let's now glue this down. I like to put enough glue because there's multiple layers here. So remember, we're going to glue and we got to be quick because this goes behind. Whoopsie. And quickly, quickly. And just enough. And I have to say that's adorable. And I love it. And then you can go in and glue some more if you want to. All right, like you can put some tape here just to stabilize that. And I would absolutely do that. You can glue your lady down completely, your plate, everything down. I personally like things just kind of lifted a little bit. It gives some dimensionality to the piece. And I like that a lot. There's my cover. I'm done. Um, a little bit of tape I would add would be here. And I'll show you this in just a minute. Because you don't want this catching it everywhere. So I'm going to lift this and add my tape right behind there. All right, so right back there is where I added the tape. Now I'm going to remove it. All right. So remember, guys, if you want to make these books, I will link you down below to my tutorial, which gives you from start to finish on how to make this project. Yes, it includes the binding. The binding is the Hidden Hinge Plus binding system, which is my binding system, um, Paper Phenomenon. So yes, my all of my tutorials include my binding system. All right, guys. So that's a, I, which I thought was a weird question that I was getting. Why does it not include binding systems? But now I know because there are others that do not include the binding system, and it's because it's this one here that it's it's my binding system, guys. All right. So yes, my tutorials include the binding systems. All right, which is a hidden hinge plus binding system. Look at how beautiful that is. Um, one thing that I have to um, fix in here is I didn't notice that the cherries had direction. And so many, not so many of you, a few of you were like, why did you glue those cherries in upside down? I didn't even see it, guys. I'm so sorry. Like here. Um, I did notice they were upside down, so I have to go in and with some undo and undo that and just turn it around. So sorry. All right, guys. So um, obviously this album will not have photos because I don't have photos for this album, but I hope to have photos for this album. It's so darling. I just absolutely love it. And I hope that you guys love it too. You can add all sorts of details to this, guys, with some glossy accents, like on the pie, and just make it nice and, and dimensional if you like to do that. So go for it. Um, absolutely. Put some glitter down if you want to. It would make it really, really fun. So I hope you love it. So I will be back with one more video. And that video will be for this album. And we're actually going to put photos in here, guys. All right, so you can see what your album will look like with photos in it. All right, so it's just going to be super, super cool and fabulous to do that with you all. Oh, and by the way, I have 100 photos that are going into this album. So um, you can see that in this teeny tiny album, you will be able to put 100 photos in here. All right, guys, so I'll be back with that information for you all.